my govan and welcome to Tolkien Lore Channel. I'm the Tolkien Geek, and some of you people ask some hard questions. For example, one viewer asked not too long ago, how could I go about learning Elvish? Now, I don't remember exactly how the question was asked, but there's many different ways to answer that question, uh, which I'll get into in a minute, but I should start with a caveat. I don't think there's any way to completely learn the Elvish language, because I, I'm fairly certain Tolkien never completed either of the two major Elvish languages, Quenya or Sindarin. And so to the extent that you can learn some of it, it's incomplete. You're never going to have a complete Elvish vocabulary to match everything we have in other living languages. With that caveat, let's explore what sources you might use to get a start. So first of all, of course, I need to make a distinction between learning the Elvish alphabet and learning the Elvish language, because the two are very much not the same thing. Learning the Elvish alphabet tells you what characters make what sounds. The Elvish alphabet is a phonetic alphabet. And so, for example, you can actually read in English the Elvish characters in the title page to The Lord of the Rings and The Silmarillion, and I don't think The Hobbit has that. It may have runes, but not not the same kind of Elvish characters that we're thinking of here. Uh, you can figure that out based on what's in the appendix to The Lord of the Rings, because Tolkien gives kind of like common uses of the Elvish alphabet, the you know, the sounds that are usually associated with the given letters, and so you can figure out from that what the title page actually says. And I've done a video on that, which I can link to in the description below, that'll help you kind of get started. So that's the alphabet, but the language, of course, is a completely different thing, and that's where it gets really complicated. Like I said, there's two languages, Quenya and Sindarin, and, you know, he's got two different you know, things going on there. They're related, but they're not the same, and so you have to pick, really, which one you want to learn, or you, mean, you could try to learn both, I suppose, but that's going to be twice as much work. Um... But if you want to get started on, on that kind of a project, two easy sources to get to would be the Silmarillion and also the History of Middle-earth volume The Lost Road, which is volume five of the History of Middle-earth series published by Christopher Tolkien. Both of these have appendices kind of at the back that have, you know, like Elvish root words and that sort of thing that give basic ideas of, you know, this is what this root word means, this is what this root word means. Now, if you pay attention to word usage in Tolkien, you can quickly, and even just in detail, read these appendices too. Uh, they're like mini glossaries, basically. If you pay attention, you can tell that much like a lot of other languages that we don't really necessarily know that well as typical American English speakers, if you're from somewhere else you might have a better idea of this, root words often get morphed and changed in terms of their meaning when combined with other things. So you may have a root word that means stick, but then the combination of that word with some other word might end up meaning leg, because your leg is kind of stick-like. I'm not saying this actually happens in Elvish. I'm just giving an example of the kind of thing that happens. So just learning the root words is not per se enough. That's not really going to get you that far in learning Elvish. So, you know, that it can give you some ideas and you can kind of work on your own with it, but it's never going to be complete because you're going to need a much more extensive vocabulary to get an idea of how all this actually works together. So how do we get beyond the really basic stuff that we get in the Silmarillion and the Lost Road? Well, now we start getting into some really technical stuff. One way that you can try to get a little bit more progress is to pay really, really close attention in the stories themselves to any time Tolkien gives us a poem or a phrase and really figure out what it means. Some of them are easy we can figure out fairly easily that, for example, my govanen, which I always start these videos with, means well met, or at least something very similar. We get a direct translation of the word melon, which Gandalf uses to open the Moria door. It means friend. That's easy. From there, you can kind of gather a little bit more. The 
phrase on the Moria door itself is in fact completely translated for us, and so we can get you know, a pretty good idea of what those words mean. Now, that being said, that's still not going to get you very far, but you can definitely get a, you know, a lot of words if you really pay attention. You can figure out what mountain or mountains mean, in, or what they are in Elvish. Orod or Ered for plural. Amon means hill. I mean, you can gather these things just from reading the stories and kind of picking out where he tells you what these names mean and pick up a little more direct vocabulary besides just the root words. But if you really, really, really want to learn Elvish, you're going to have to go to some journals that really get into manuscripts that have never really been published otherwise. The two main ones would be the Parma El de Lambaron and the Vinyar Tinguar. I'm not exactly sure how you can acquire these. I know of them. I've never tried to get into that myself because I've just, much as I like the idea of learning Elvish, I've never had that much time on my hands. Uh, but these both have published over time various manuscripts that Tolkien has put together of aspects of his languages. And so you can get a lot more information about the languages from those sources. There are other sources as well. There's a myth lore journal out there. There's probably others I'm not even aware of. But these are kind of the main ones because they have access to the you know the direct manuscripts that Tolkien wrote and which are mostly kept at the Bodleian Library. So that's pretty much your sources if you want to learn Elvish. And if you want to really actually learn a relatively full version of Elvish, that's pretty much where you gotta go because most material that's published for just kind of general consumption and even what Christopher Tolkien did with the History of Middle-Earth series is not necessarily general consumption. <laughs> uh, it's definitely not on the level of, look, here's another story. It's, it's a lot more technical even than that. So, you know, even the History of Middle-Earth isn't going to get you that far. If you really want to learn the languages, you're pretty much going to have to go and get access to these journals somehow and really dig into those because that's that's pretty much it. Unless, you know, there may be some schools out there that, you know, kind of have a wild hair and offer courses in Elvish. But, you know, if, if they are, they're probably few and far between and you might have to, you know, dig around to really find something like that. But, you know, there may be other sources on the Internet that, claim and maybe even legitimately do kind of teach, you know, something about Elvish. Um, but I'm not going to recommend any because I'm not have time to go and just look everywhere and figure out which ones are trustworthy. You can probably do a Google search and do just as well as me on that score anyway. But at any rate, if you're really interested in learning Elvish, that's pretty much what you got to do. So I'll leave it there. So, hope you enjoyed that video. For those of you who are really interested in learning Elvish, I hope that uh, gave you an idea of where to get started and what to work on. I hope that, you know, doesn't daunt you too much because there's nothing necessarily wrong with learning Elvish, especially with Amazon making its series in the near future. There will be more actual practical uses for people who know the languages in the near future. And maybe in, you know, even into the future beyond that, who knows. So at any rate, if you did like the video, please do give it a share and a thumbs up. If you want to follow me on Twitter at JRRT Lore, you can get some occasional Tolkien-related trivia questions. You can subscribe to the channel here. Don't forget to click that bell icon. You can support the channel here, and you can find two of my previous videos here. Don't, uh, and until the next time, I am the Tolkien Geek, signing out for the Tolkien Lore channel. No matter